Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Yes, I am filming in landscape mode. If you're not used to that and you like to watch the videos, sorry, I know it can kind of get annoying, but I prefer that right now. It just feels, it feels um, important for me right now as I'm channeling today to feel a container, a safe and sacred space and feel kind of cozy. And that's how I feel right now with this view with you. It feels more um, like one-on-one, -on -one. even though I know there's lots of you that are watching this incredible channeling video. This is a special video, okay? It is timely and there are going to be two, I, I don't know if there's gonna be two people on this one or just one person. And um, I do want to do a video specifically for a friend as a gift. And so I intend to do more if the second person doesn't show up. Okay, so first, yes, okay, it is Brandon Lee. We are gonna be channeling with Brandon Lee. You will see that on the introduction. You'll see that on the thing, the title of the video. However, my initial intention was to sit down and do a channeling of Bruce Lee's dad for a, as a gift for a friend of mine. So, I'm not sure if both of them will show up because they might, but there's some specific things I want to um, ask Bruce Lee about also. I don't know anything about either one of these figures, historic figures, I shouldn't say anything. I do know that Bruce Lee was this famous martial artist, um, incredible with his body, worked in Hollywood, um, film star, and also trained other people and had some incredible gifts, skills, and talents physically and also um, mentally, like this philosopher kind of vibe. I really feel that. I, and I don't necessarily know that because I'm not like a martial artist kind of person and I'm not like an old school, um, um, you know, uh, like fight, um, choreographed fight kind of videos, that kind of thing, or movies, that kind of thing. I'm not that. And he actually died the year that I was born. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm like, wait a minute, what? Because I'm thinking, how long has it been since he's been gone? Um, so that was interesting. So just kind of know that. Yeah. About six months later. Um, and so, but timing. Brandon Lee, his son, because of current events and Hollywood and the use of props on set and safety on set, we know that there's been a tragedy um, related once again to gun violence actually on a set, an accident, right? But it's violent, right? This is a violent thing that happened and could have been avoided senseless, right? What's just recently happened here, right? Um, and I'm recording this in at the very end of October, early November of 2021. And so you can just look that up if you want to know what's, what I'm referring to. And Brandon Lee died the same way. He died on the set of the movie Crow, The Crow in like 93. I remember some of this stuff because I was like just out of high school and it was this whole thing. And it was like, and people liked him because he was like easy on the eyes. <laughs> Let's just be honest, right? Like all the teenage girls back in the day, I was like, woo. Well, Matt, some of the teenage girls back in the day, woo. <laughs> but because of the current events, he like steps forward first. So we're this might be a Brandon Lee and Bruce Lee combo deal. So we'll see what happens, okay? It might be two videos, I'm not sure. We'll see what's gonna happen here. So Brandon, it's nice to meet you. He looks like he did when he crossed over. You look young and refreshed. Yeah, yeah, he says, yeah. Um, is there a vibe? I get a sense from you of there's an incredible amount of peace. First, I want to say that there's a lot of peace. There's an incredible amount of this um, kind of gentle perspective energetically that feels just really balanced, you guys, super balanced. All right, so I wanna get a sense from you, Brandon. Did you know like that your life wouldn't be full lived long, that you wouldn't live a long life? Did you have a sense of, of your mortality as far as like life, longevity, lifespan? Cause I'm curious about that first of all. Yes, he says yes. I believe that all of us have the opportunity to 
Wow, he's kind of philosophical, interesting. I kind of feel two parts of him. He kind of feels a little bit philosophical, but a little edgy, like rebellious. Like kind of, not angry, but it has an edge to him. So maybe it's the human part and the spirit ethereal part, part that I feel maybe. Cause he has this really peaceful energy vibe and he's like giving me this kind of vibe of, well, your life is what you choose to make of it. And no matter how long that is, no matter how long it lasts, it's important. And if you waste it, that's, you waste it. You can't, he's like, you can't save people from themselves. He just said that out loud. That is interesting. Cause I was just thinking that this morning. He said, you can't save people from themselves. And people make choices that do impact other people. That's a thing. He says, that's a thing. That's an important part. It's not just, it's not just about, life isn't just about you doing your part as a human being, but it's about you doing your part and showing up with the understanding that others will also do the same. Now, he says, I understand that this is something that's conflicted and, it, and, it, and it's, it feels like you don't have a choice and just things happen to you and it's just random. And he said, it's not random. There are intersection points. There are choice points that cause you to be in a certain place at a certain time. And he says, had I not been there, I would not have left the planet at that time. That's correct, absolutely. If I hadn't been cast for the part, if that day we weren't shooting, if there wasn't this big, he's giving me this view of like, either it was the very end of the movie or the very end of a day or a filming day, or it was almost like one more thing. They just needed to do one more thing and this happened. And if that one more thing or that last, it's either one more thing or last thing wouldn't have happened, he would still, he would not have died that day. But he says, it's not about the way you died. He says, it's not about the way you died. He says that for us, like other lifetimes, this lifetime, it's not about the way you die. It's about the way you lived. Did you live? And he says, if I had more time, yes. He says, I would like, I would love to have children, a family, a, a life, a, a, a home, a happy, a full life, yes. Am I angry about that? There's not really a feeling there. He's like saying there's not really a feeling there. Um, he says, I, he's also showing me stumbling, like making mistakes. Like, I don't know if he had some alcohol issues or some, He's showing me mistakes or stumbling that kind of almost feels like a bump in the road, like somebody having a lot of stress and like either using medications or maybe having some mental health struggles and needing some assistance but not getting it. And so maybe making some bad choices either by treating people badly or being self-destructive in some way. I'm not trying to judge. I'm just saying this is how it feels to me. He's showing me some stumbling and he's showing me kind of getting on track and he's showing me people, influential people in his life that he could look up to that believed in me, he said. He's showing me like people taking him under his wing. Um, now, this is interesting. I don't know who this is. You guys might know if you're fans of Bruce Lee or Brandon Lee. This, we're talking to Brandon right now. There's this huge, large black man <laughs> that is, I think he's black. He might be Jamaican. He, big guy and um, really tough and like almost like a trainer, a personal coach, motivator kind of guy. And I'm getting that vibe with Brandon, like that um, mentally got to prepare, um, um, physically understanding what it takes physically and just, he says, um, not respecting the body for a while. Like he feels like he had this kind of um, back and forth a little bit with his body, with the body, his body, um, not respecting it, respecting it, not respecting it or not, maybe not respecting it isn't the right word taking it for granted, like that it would just show up and perform and do things. He's showing me his heart open, like um, injured heart. Ooh, okay, um, an arm. Um, I don't know if he had heart stuff or if the, he's showing me the, the, the passing, because usually people would show me the, that kind of stuff. He's like, it's Hollywood, you gotta, you know, be theatrical. I'm like, no, no, no. He's kind of funny. He's funny, but in like a very straight-faced kind of way, like says something, he's like, well. <laughs> he's not super flirty. He's not super charming. He's kind of got this almost intellectual edginess about him that's interesting, very interesting. Um, a presence of mind. 
And so can I ask, did you feel in your human life that like your dad was supporting you or helping you? Oh, absolutely. He says that there's no way I could have. He says, no way I could have got, got, gotten into and out of some of the things that I have experienced and also given me opportunities. Just really wanting me to, to strive to be my best. At the same time, he says, I was angry about my dad's death. He's saying, I was angry. Not having your dad is something that is really difficult and not something that That's just not easy. It's just not easy for anyone, anyone that's lost a parent, especially a father like a father like mine. He, I mean, he was famous. He was very well known and he had a lot of struggles and he blazed a lot of trails, but it's not, it, it wasn't for me specifically to walk them. So there's kind of this coming to terms with his persona, personality versus his person, you know? Because this is the person I know. This is the person I know intimately. This is my dad. You know, this is the, a person I didn't, get to know as well as I wanted to know. Like I'm getting that vibe that he really didn't get to know him very well. I don't know if he was little. You must have been little when he crossed over. Yeah, he doesn't feel very old. Oh. And then he shows me, then I see the number 8-10 or 10. So I don't know if it's the 10th month like October or the 8th month like August or it's eight years or 10 years. I don't know what that means. Somebody can put it below. Could be somebody's birthday at 8 10 or 10 8. I'm not sure. So I'm really enjoying this conversation with you, Brandon. We might have to do your dad separate. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So can you tell us about so timing here? Timing, because there's current events and Hollywood and another accident that took a life. He says, that's not an accident. People need to do their jobs, he says. You need to do your jobs. You need to be accountable and responsible for doing your jobs, he says. Things need to change. People need to be safer. People need to use their, and he's swearing, he says, effing brain. People need to use their effing brain, he says. Because people die when you don't. He's like, this doesn't, are you angry about your death or the way you died? He says, there's not that. He doesn't have that. Like, there's not that. And there's not forgiveness either, but there's not anger. There's just this, this is just an is. This is just a fact. This is just what happened to him. But when he projects into this new current event situation with the um, cinematographer, I think, was killed, and a director or someone was injured <clears throat> on a film set in New Mexico, I think it was, to, it wasn't New Mexico, I think so. Um, current events. And then he, when he projects into this energy, there's anger. Like, he's like... Um, this doesn't need to, it's senseless. He's like, it doesn't make sense. That's what it is. It's not really anger. It's like the senselessness. Like what? Like this disbelief, like really? How, how, um, how, can, how can this just continue to happen? And it's not like um, somebody needs to step in and protect everybody. It's everybody involved needs to do their jobs. They need to do their jobs. That's what he's saying. So it's not about a systemic issue. It's about the expectation and the training and the professionalism that needs to be in place in order to create something that is phenomenal, you know? Okay. Ooh, okay, I do see Bruce Lee. I do. <laughs> he steps in and says, I'm very proud of my son. I'm very proud of the man he became, and I can't take credit. He says, I, don't, I can't take credit for that. He talks really kind of short and fast. I, I don't know, like I say, I don't know how he sounds. Short and fast. Um, sentences, um, statements, very proud of my son. The credit for his life is his. His opportunities are his own. I'm very proud, very proud, yes. So there's a whole bunch of stuff I want to talk to you about, um, to Bruce Lee about, and um, maybe we could talk about just overarching energy of like the, the motivational part. Like that's what I'd love to do a whole video about that. Like it feels like you have this incredible story of 
passion, of a drive to present the truest parts of yourself, the gifts, like you living on fire with your gifts and constantly and continuously looking for ways to make it better, make yourself better, share what you know with others, work with the body. It's almost, it's like the spirituality of the body. And when I'm feeling into your energy, I am super drawn to that, which is interesting, you guys, because I didn't want to channel Bruce Lee. No offense to you, he says. Oh. Everyone evolves, he says. Everyone evolves, everyone evolves. He says, you know, it, it is, it's simple. It's simple. It is not complicated. It's the mind that makes it complicated. You must use the mind to make it simple. There's a great deal of trust he's showing me. Okay, I have to talk about this because I can't, I can't match his words. It's too hard. It's like short and staccata, almost like a little bit. And then he starts to talk and it kind of gets really flowery and beautiful, actually. But energetically, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to connect with him empathically. He's talking about the body and I'm fascinated with it. He's talking about the ability of the human body to morph and flow and move in ways that are powerful strong and beautiful it's like stealth like um like i see him down and like like moving in ways that y nobody could comprehend really until you see it and he says it's not a misuse of the body to push it it is not mistreatment of the body to 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 push it to a point of injury or getting injured my hair is a mess sorry guys it's bugging me i can see it <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Lee. Yeah, there's like a hair right here. Hello, I'm stopping my channel. I got the middle to fix my hair. Uh, I'm such a girl. Okay. Mm, he says gender. Should we talk about that? Women's roles also. Um, he... It feels like he worked with women also equally as men were, has he worked with men? Like there wasn't a um, distinction necessarily between the capabilities of the female body versus the masculine body, which is interesting. And he says the training is, is the foundation, the core. And he says, there's a consistency. He says, you must have a repetitive, consistent pattern to train the muscles, to train the body. And then over time, trust is developed because there is a solid foundation you know where you are resourced from. It's very spiritual, you guys, but it's the body and it's spiritual and it's, it's heart, but it's like this bottom of the heart that looks like a little triangle that is like this root and earth, like uh, uh, you're solid. The earth will always catch you. When you move and land, when you take off and you land back down, the earth will catch you. Just know this, know it. You will be, you will be supported because the earth will be there. The land will be there. And it is the body that absorbs the cushioning energetically, is what it feels like, you guys, of the land, he says. So when you land, and then he says, um, it's like a touch. It's not hard or harsh, it's like a touch. And then it's like a recoil, and then your, your body absorbs with the earth and then comes back up, and then moves again. It's so beautiful, like this, there's these arm movements and these hands. I am not into martial arts, I have no idea what this is, but this is beautiful. And it's this, it's kind of like dance, yoga, holding. People that are into martial arts are gonna be so offended by what I'm saying, but this is what I know. Okay, I'm a layman when it comes to this. It's like this um, incredible, like, it's like the energy movement of the, like what I would say the chakras in the body, but this energetic power, it's like the elements, earth, air, fire, water. And then he says, it's the embodiment of all. He says, it's the directions. That's how you know the direction, earth, air, fire, water. Are you at the air? Using the air, are you at the earth? Letting her hold you. And is there masculine, feminine? Yes, yes, he says, but there's, there's a, the place in between is the oneness. He says, that's what he focuses on, the one. And when you are the one, the one will hold you. It's not different, it's the same. Interesting. I feel like he's way more chatty in the afterlife than maybe he was in human life, I'm not sure, because it feels like I could see quotes of his, but I can't see, like in human life, if I was researching stuff, and maybe in like some 
Maybe if we looked up some interviews or something, we could see him kind of talk. Maybe I should do that actually, and then ask a bunch of questions based on that. I'm not sure, but it feels, I, I'm understanding what the attraction is to him because of this, like, it's almost like spiritual master of a human body. And that's incredible. It's like fascinating to me. And it's about like flexibility and muscle movement and memory and knowing in this incredible trust that you will land and that your body will, will be received by the earth or whatever surface you land upon and it will be able to move and recoil and bounce back and be unharmed. There's not damage, there's a, just this really trust in that. And he says, he says it, it bleeds into other areas of your life. Did he, I wonder if he had heart problems because I keep seeing the internal structure of his heart and it doesn't look quite right. Like there's some off things here that don't quite, um, it's almost like he's built differently inside. Does that sound weird? I wonder if he had a heart thing, like as a kid or younger or if he didn't know about that or what, because it feels like there's a heart, something with this heart, something's up with this heart. And I don't know if it made it easier for him to do the things he did or he almost feels like, you guys, it almost feels like Bruce Lee could have been like this magician, like hold your breath really long, like this master of the body and transcending like this balance between what's real and unreal, what the physical body can do, what it can't do, what the mind can do, what it can't do. It's like there's a, it's like he was able to, or he's able to, they shows me the infinity symbol, to connect the mind with the body so that they can together transcend. Yeah, that is cool. Now that's cool, I'm in for that. The mind and the body together can transcend, he says. They must work together. There must be a union. There must be a common understanding and moving toward a common goal. And the goal is this fluidity, you guys, this fluidity. Everything is always changing. You must be adapt to be able to change and move with the change. So if you're like, he's showing me, this is crazy. He's showing me like this, um, I can't tell if it's a train, a flat railroad bed that's moving, or if it's like the back, like a truck, a flatbed of a truck moving and it's moving and he's on it and he's moving around and jumping in the air. And the idea of when you're moving and jumping in the air and something is moving, you, you could miss it. <laughs> like it can move fast and you're, you're away. So you have to account for that. So you move forward in order to catch up to the energy of the time of the foundation in which you're landing upon. So he's almost like this time jumper, this like um, layers of time, like moving through this in order to be able to land in the precise place moment in time that is needed. So he goes into the future, comes back to the present to be received. And therefore he is always in the exact right place at the exact right time. Does that sound weird? That sounds kind of crazy, but it's how it feels. <laughs> wow, now I totally get why people are into Bruce Lee. I super get this. I think we, can we have some more conversation because I'm kind of interested in this now. I'm kind of curious and, and I know someone who'd really appreciate being able to ask you questions. If you guys have questions for Bruce Lee, put them in the comments below. So we've already talked with Brandon, his son. We started with Brandon. We talked a little bit with Bruce Lee as well. So in the comments below, specifically for Bruce, if there are specific questions, things that you want to know, put them in the comments below so that I can um, consider that maybe for the future. Wouldn't that be cool? I just, I'm really interested. Again, for those of you who are mega fans or really into martial arts and all that, um, sorry if I said stuff weird or... I didn't mean to offend you, just so you know, I literally just have no, I have no language for this. So I'm doing the best I can, all right. All right, so this is Bridget. Thanks so much for watching Above Life channel on YouTube. I hope I've inspired your spirit today, filled you with some hope with Brandon Lee and Bruce Lee. Thank you both gentlemen for being here today. Encouraged you to live your life. It's your life after all, and you get to live it, just live it. Thanks for being here.